just my turn, basically. Um, like uh, uh, we said, that this is going to be recorded, so in case you miss something or anything, you can just go on any YouTube, it's going to be posted. And this PowerPoint is also going to be posted. If you want to follow along, that's the URL to the PowerPoint. Um, and we'll also post this on Facebook or something later on. Yeah. So the way it's going to work is I'm going to cover the first half. So the first 45 minutes or so, I'll be going over files, uh, dictionaries, and unit testing. And then we'll give you guys a little bit of a break, and then she is going to go over the next week. Um, yeah, with sorting algorithms and like runtime and all that stuff. So without further ado, I guess we can get started. So dictionary. What are dictionaries? So dictionaries are basically like, they're a set of key value pairs. And in dictionaries, uh, keys are, they have to be an immutable uh, type, like a string, integer, or a tuple. Um, something like, if you were to have a key as a list, that would fail, because a list is mutable. But the value, you have no restrictions in terms of what your value is. Um, you can have it be anything. You can have it be list, string, or even another dictionary. Um, and the way you initialize dictionaries, well, there's a couple ways you can do it. So first of all, you can just do it with the empty squiggly braces. Um, one thing you'll notice is that an empty dictionary and empty set look the same if you were to print it, but they're not initialized the same because you know it's ambiguous if you were to initialize something the same way. So to initialize a set, you would do um, the set and then brackets. And you can also initialize dictionaries with the DICT in brackets. Another thing to note is that dictionaries are not ordered. So unlike a list where you got like the actual indices, if you didn't have a key in a dictionary that was explicitly like one or something, you can't get like the first or the, I guess second title of dictionary. So just a quick example of a dictionary. So like let's say you have um, names to ages, uh, which is just mapping a bunch of strings to integers. Um, you can get the value of any particular person's age, or like, let's say Alice. Um, you can do it by indexing it, same way how you do a list, but you have a string instead, and that would return 30. Uh, you could also use the get method, uh, which would also do the same thing. Uh, the only difference between these two is if the key does not exist, um, if you were to do it the uh, index with, uh, the key, it would give you an error, whereas if you did it the get way, you would get a none type. Um, yeah. Or um, actually for get, you, can, you have the option of providing a second parameter. Uh, let's say um, if you do get Alice and negative one, if it was not able to find Alice in the dictionary, if it was an invalid key, it would return whatever you entered in in the second parameter as negative one. Um, this is just an extra thing. I don't really think it's used very often, but I just thought I would throw that in there. So uh, as for uh, traversing through a dictionary, well, one way you can do it is you can use the, um, the uh, element for loop, the for each loop that you can use in this as well. This will just go through all the, um, the keys in the dictionary. So, if, so for name to age, uh, you're going through the names. The, the names are the keys. And you can print the uh, individual ages by just doing the dictionary index at the name, which is the key. So you can have print name to age, uh, index at the name. That would just go through all the ages. It would go through 30, 15, 45, 25, 35. And you can also get a list-like object of all the keys if you did uh, name to age dot keys. Um, yeah. So as for uh, files, um, a file. So if you, um, when it comes to files, there are three different ways you can open it. Um, so you want to open a file name. Uh, the file name is a, is the string. It is a string, it's the name of the file, and you also have a mode. If you don't provide a mode, I think by default it'll, um, it'll open it in read mode, but you can also provide um, either R, W, or A, which corresponds to read, write, or append. 
Um, and I, I think you guys are familiar with what those three do. So read means you just, you're just reading the file. You're not modifying the original file in any way. Write means you're completely overwriting what the original file was. So if you had some content in the file, if you wrote, open it up in write mode, uh, whatever that original content was, it'll uh, go away if you uh, write onto it. And then append is just adding to whatever the previous file was. And then finally, you can close a file handle <coughs> object uh, by doing file handle.close. So um, in terms of reading, there's a couple of ways you can read. Um, so you could read files one line at a time. And you do that by doing file handle.readline. Um, or you could read the entire file into one string, which will give you, which, which is file handle.read. Or you could read all the lines in the file, and each line is corresponding to an uh, element in a list. So it takes all the lines and it puts it into a list. So these are the three methods that you can use to uh, read the file. We'll be going over some examples um, about that. Go to the next one. So let's say um, you have a text that uh, says happy birthday to you. Uh, if you were to do file handle dot read line, what would that output? Yep. Happy Kuma tu, kuma you. Uh, file handle dot read line. You're reading ah, the read line. The yeah, read the first line. one. Ah, the only the word happy. Yes, it would return uh, happy, uh, but it will also include the uh, new line character. If you, uh, yeah. so it would actually return happy and then the new line character. So if you were to print it in console, it would give you happy and then like a like a space. Because the way the document is, it's like happy, new line, birthday, new line, two, new line. So, yeah. And if you were to read, um, just do a dot read, how would that look like? Any ideas? Yeah. Happy slash in, no space, birthday, no space, slash in, no space, two, slash in, no space, you. Yes. Yeah, so that's exactly how it is. Uh, and uh, read lines. Yeah, in the back. Yeah, so just to repeat, he just said that um, uh, it's going to return a list where each uh, item in the list represents a line. It's going to be happy new line, birthday new line, to new line. Um, yeah. So then we come to the uh, idea of looping through the items in a line. So there are a couple ways you can do uh, you can do this. So one, you can just do for line in file handle. I believe you guys had like a worksheet on this, like um, different ways you can loop through a file handle. Uh, and you, how you can like you can take like either every line or every other line you want to print. So there's a, a I believe there's a worksheet on that. You guys can look on that uh, if you want more info. So for this one in particular, does anyone know what uh, what would the output be for this one? You're just doing four line and file handle. You're just printing line. Yeah. Happy uh, slash name. Birthday slash in, two slash in, two slash in. Yeah, that's yeah, that's right. Um, but since you're actually printing it, it'll it'll print like it on individual lines. So yeah, that's correct. Um, so go to the next one. Um, yeah. So here's the so the next thing I wanted to go through is if you're looping through a file and it's it ends with a certain like line. Like let's say it ends with three dashes and you want to stop the file from reading once you get to a certain point. Um, you don't want to include the last three dashes because if you were to go for line and file handle, it would give you happy birthday to you. And it would just read through the entire file. So my question is, do you guys know how we could read through a file so that we omit the last line, so that we just stop once we get to that, that last character, that last, uh, 
Yeah, you can use a while loop. Okay, so what exactly would the algorithm look like? Like while, so first you read one line, so lines equal to like that file dot read line, then a while loop, so like while line is not equal, no, yeah, while line is not equal to like dash dash dash, and then you would print the line, and then read the next line, and keep going through the Yeah, that's exactly how it is. So uh, like you said, um, if you were, if you wanted to stop once you got to a certain point, you just first you read the line, and then you do while not line dot starts with or does not equal to like dash 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 slash n, you print the line and then you keep um, checking the new line. Now this is very similar to how if you were to have a list uh, and you want to stop after you get to a certain index. You would first start by having i equal to zero, and then you would have like while i is less than a certain index, or while i is not equal to some item, you would keep doing i plus equals one, which is essentially your file handle that we So, yeah. Um, as for writing, so it's just, uh, just, just like reading, you just do dot write, and then um, that file handle object, you put uh, text uh, inside the method and it will uh, write to that uh, file depending on which mode you open it up in. So if you open it up and write, again, it'll overwrite whatever was in the original file. And if you did append, it would add to it. Um, there's a couple of uh, characters that you can use. So if you want to create new lines, you can use the backslash n. You can also use tabs if you want. But one thing you have to make sure is that you close your files afterwards, um, otherwise it may not write, or you may not even be able to access the file if you were to uh, exit the program. So I'd like to go over uh, one uh, of the questions uh, that deals with dictionaries and um, files. And for some reason, the question is not there. Okay, let me, yeah, so let me just try to get the question from memory. So let's say you have, um, you have a file that has a name, uh, course, like CSC 808, and then you have a grade, and you just have a bunch of these, all right? you want to do is you want to build a dictionary that gives you, I guess let me add another, let's say I add another grade for Anna, just so that she has two grades. Um, okay, so it ends with that. You want, to, you want to build a dictionary that essentially takes each student and then it takes, uh, it, it maps each student to a dictionary that, have, that maps each course to uh, their grade. So, it will, so what I mean by that is it would look something like this. So you have your dictionary. It would map um, Anna to Anna also has a A67 mark. We will also have this. And then the other the other guys have only one mark. course to the group. 
So you just want you want to take this file and you want to build a dictionary, um, and this dictionary is going to be just strings, the dictionary of strings to integers. So I'm going to give you guys um, a few minutes to think about how you how you do it. Um, I know there's like comments over there about uh, how you do it, but I want to know if there's a another approach or a better approach you guys can use. always a slash n, so you have to make sure to strip that part out. So I guess I'll just go over the algorithm step by step. So the first thing you want to do, I guess, can I erase this? Like again, I'm sorry that I didn't get the question. For some reason it disappeared, I don't know why. But basically, um, actually I'll erase this. So you guys know how it's going to be formatted. It's just going to be, actually, I'll keep one line. I'll keep one line just so I have some space for it. It's just going to be a bunch of. So basically, what you're going to do is I'll just write like pseudocode. Is first, you're going to get one line, or I guess read one line. one line and you're going to store that in a variable and then you're going to keep reading lines until you haven't reached this uh, dash 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 so um, keep reading until and then what you're going to do is your line is going to be, so here's the thing, your line currently is going to look something like this. It's not going to look exactly like you see here, it's going to have a slash n at the end. So what you want to do is you want to strip the line that you're on. So now you're, now it's going to look like Anna CSCA0899 and nothing else. So what you can do now is you can split this in uh, at the commas, right? So if you split it at the commas, uh, split the line at the commas, and you want to store that. In, you want to store the name. Um, the uh, course and the grade, and then you want to do a check for if it's if the you want to see if it's in the dictionary or not. Like you want to have a dictionary, so I guess you want to also have a you want to initialize a dictionary first. Uh, an empty dictionary, and then you want to check if the name is in the dictionary or not. So let's say um, if the name uh, not in the dictionary, the way, what you would do then is you would, um, you would add it to the dictionary like this, right? You would have something like 
let's say we call this dictionary STM. So you would do STM the name, and you would map you would map that to like a new a new course to mark or grade or whatever you decide to call the variable for the grade mapping. Uh, otherwise, otherwise you would take the student, you just append it, right? You take the student uh, to marks at the name, and then you would, the, the dictionary for the stu this uh, student's name already exists, so you just add it to the dictionary. So you do course equals mark. That's it. So, um, does everyone sort of understand this like pseudocode? Yeah. Uh, but what if you have the same wife with two different courses? Do you have a dictionary inside the dictionary? Yeah. And how does it work for that? Um, yeah. So if you have, you said a student, same student but different courses, right? So then it would just add it to the dictionary. So like if you had Anna A08 and like 67 or something, you would have like this. Uh, right? You have the name and then the dictionary. And everyone understands why this code works for that, right? Okay, so if you go to the, if you go to the uh, next, um, so this is slightly different from uh, how I approach it, but basically you do the same sort of thing. You have an empty uh, student to marks uh, dictionary, and then you do your initial reading of the line, and then you loop until you don't reach the dash, dash, dash. And then uh, you do this part. I want to explain. So you want you have input line dot split at the comma. So when you split, it'll give you a list of the strings, right? It would give you uh, like Anna CSCA ninety nine. So what I use to assign all of those variables at the same time is a tuple. So I did student course grade is equal to this list. So that means that the first item is equal to this is this is student and this is course. So this is student, this is course, and this is grade. So Python lets you do that with tuples. So you don't have to necessarily like have a list and be like, oh the um, map the zeroth item to the uh, first item to the second item, you can just assign them, and it looks a lot better because it because it's more descriptive. You have descriptive variables of what you're uh, dealing with. So then you can just check if the student is in the student to marks or not, and if so, you just um, you just add the uh, if if the student is already in there, you just map a new course to it. Um, what I did was actually I made an empty dictionary first, uh, and then if they didn't exist, I would add the uh, grade to it. Yeah. Okay, so you know how um, you know how you asked if there is a dictionary inside of a dictionary, basically? That happens when, you, you see the line where it says course to grade, uh, that's like the empty dictionary, right over here. Yeah? Okay, so that one creates the internal list basically. So if that student doesn't already exist, it creates this other dictionary and it adds stuff into that. That's where the like dictionary inside of a dictionary part comes in. So if you like run through your run through the code with a sample or something, like you will get exactly this double dictionary. I think if I had the had the question, it would have been a lot more clearer. So, 
So that was it for files and dictionaries. So now I'd just like to briefly go over unit you know, testing. So does everyone have like this stuff down? Okay. So I'm just gonna erase it a little bit to so the most common type of unit testing you'll be doing is with uh, like number ranges. So like if you had something like um, a number range dealing with 0, uh, 13, like let's say, um, yeah, you have, a nu you have a number range and you want to be like, okay, is this number between 0 and 13 or is it higher? Then uh, you can just visualize it by having a number line having 0 and then 13 and then you can find your test cases by just having one number that's less than your lowest one number that is at one of your edge cases and then one number that's in between and then another edge case and then something that's greater so in total you would have five test cases so that's like the simplest sort of example. Um, depending on uh, whether it's like, it, like the test cases you choose, it's dependent on the question. Like in the pre-requirements, there could be something like um, anything less than zero is invalid. Like let's say this is dealing with ages, right? Like let's say this is age to like, I don't know, sign up for a website or something. Um, age can't be uh, less than zero, so you would actually not have that case. So then you just be down four cases. But it's really important to make sure that you see in the pre-requirements whether uh, that is something you should test for. So if you go to the next one, I'd just like to go over briefly a question from the 2017 final about just uh, testing. So you have a bunch of like tax brackets, and you want to uh, just make the test cases for it. So I guess the table would be like, we'll go over a few of them, not all of them, because there is a lot of them. So you have a description, and then you have like um, input. So input would be income here, which is an integer. And then you have your expected value. So if we go with the number line, uh, as you can see, um, there's like, I guess I could just start writing out the number. So there's going to be like uh, 45,000 or so, uh, 90, is that income is zero, so we don't have to worry about stuff less than that. Um, so how, based on what we did before, how many cases would there be then? Like if we were to just write it all out. cases there would be, or how many cases you'd want to check for? 11, and why is that? So one, if you do an invalid number, like negative or something, and then one, if it's zero, 
in between zero and forty. In between all of them, uh, all of, all of the, the numbers and numbers. Yeah. So the one thing is, um, depending on like your precondition, uh, you don't have to check for invalid. So um, it's sort of like if you were given. Um, I guess it like depends on the question. Like, if they if they give you that income is supposed to be greater than or equal to zero, then you only have to test for those sort of cases. So in that case, you would only test for um, the edge case here, zero, and then something in between the next edge case and zero, and then the next edge case, which is 45, and then in between, and so on. We'll probably give you like a table that looks like this. You have a description of the test case. Um, you could have just like uh, lowest income have that be zero, and then the expected result from the function. So if your income is zero, uh, they give you the actual result. It's zero point one five for fifteen percent. And then the next case, like if you had something, let's call this in bracket one. So in B1, um, I'll say this is like 30K. Uh, the expected would once again be just 0 0.15. And then you have the edge case. So I would probably call this like B1 upper bound or something edge case that would be at 45 obviously you want to have like the exact number it's like 45,282 but like I can't that so and here um, would that be 20.5 or would it be 15 15 yeah so 45 is included in that uh, um, the bracket as you can see, it says up to, and then bracket two is like over that amount and up to 90. So this would always also be 0 0.15. And then uh, you can do like in bracket two, and let's say this is like 60, and this one would be 0 0.205. So those are just like the first uh, four. I'm not gonna go through all of them. If you go the next slide, we'll see all the uh, answers there. And uh, next, I just want to go over, instead of uh, integers, uh, what if you had like strings, lists, and dictionaries? Because I know when you think of test cases, you usually think of like integers or, or number, uh, number lines. So I tried to find an example um, that involved a different data, data structure. So like if you had strings, uh, lists, and dictionaries, the way you check them usually is you check for like the case of an empty input, and then one character or element, one character, uh, one item input, and then more than one character or item input. Now this is going to defer, or this is going to change depending on like what the question is. Like you might have to check even and odd number of items, or you know. A uh, certain number of, like, certain multiple number of items. So if you go to the next slide, let's say you have an example that is palindrome, and this function returns true if and only if the string is palindromic. Um, and the condition is that you're restricting your input to be so that the string is only between 0 and 3 in length. So everyone understands what. A string being zero in length means, right? What would it look like? Yeah? An empty string. An empty string. What does that look like? Uh, just the, the quotation mark may not be Yeah. So the empty string would just look like that. I guess that is that looks like there's something inside. Uh, so it just look like that. So that's like the empty string. Um, actually, yeah, I'll, I'll put description here, and then input specials. So 
So So what do you expect? Do you expect the empty string to be palindromic? Is the Yeah? And why is that? Yeah. So what what's the I guess okay, I guess I didn't say like do you guys all understand what palindromic means? Yeah, so palindromic means um, the string is the same forwards as it is backwards. So like race car for example, um, well race car without a space, it's the same forward, it's race car, but if you take it backwards, it's also R-A-C-E-C-A-R. -E so it's the same forwards and backwards. So the reason why the empty string is palindromic is because it's empty forwards and empty backwards. So you should expect to see true for that. And the next thing, what case should we expect next? Yeah? No tipelito. Sorry? No, no tipelito. So like what kind of a string would be not a palindrome? Uh, the word uh, C C A weight. Okay, sure. So actually would that be a valid input? For this function. Uh, only, only later. Yeah. So C, 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 A. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Would that still, would that be valid? Because <laughs> look at the precondition. What does the precondition say? Oh, it's Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> okay, so something like. So this is kind of just like a, how would you describe it? It should give you false, but like what's a what's an eloquent way of describing this? It's a non-palindrome string. Yeah, it's a string. More than one. Yeah. Yeah. I guess. Um, yeah, more than one is a good description. Can you think of like a better description? Let's let's come back to this one. Um, let's say, what's another one that we missed? Another obvious one. Yeah? One character. One character. Yeah. So, what's your favorite character? A. Hey. Hey. So one character. Is this a palindrome? Yes. Yeah. yeah. A is the same forwards as backwards. Um, so the thing about empty and one character is that no matter what you do, they're always going to be palindromes. So that's one thing you have to check. But then for the rest of the strings, there's a possibility that it might not be a palindrome or that it could be a palindrome. So there's two cases you have to check. Um, so let's let's go with an input that is a palindrome. Do you guys have any ideas what an input could be? Yeah. Yeah. CSC. CSC. <laughs> okay. So this is going to return true. Um, so we have we dealt with zero characters. We've dealt with one character. And we've dealt with three characters, um, but we haven't dealt with two characters, right? So what would, and two characters again, like there's a possibility that it can be either palindromic or non-palindromic. So I guess I'll just uh, do it really quickly. You can have like a palindromic character, uh, palindromic two characters, like that's uh, CC, or you could have something that's like not, um, like uh, so this would return true, and this would return false. And for description, I guess um, you can just do for this one, you can do like even length 
palindrome for even length non palindrome. And for this one, you can do odd palindrome, odd non palindrome. Right? Does that make sense? Um, so the reason why I restrict it to just three, because actually there's one more case we forgot about. No, no. So there's length zero between three, right? Is this the only way you can have a palindrome of length three? No. What's another way you could have palindrome of length three? Yeah. So if you have the same letter three times, like A A A, that's another way you could have a palindrome. So that would be like um, say odd length. I don't know uniform. There's probably like a better way to come up with descriptions. Like, stuff is probably not gonna take off marks for like having too weird of descriptions. Um, just make sure you can have the test cases. But the reason why I limit it to three is because once you get to four and five, you can have like different way more ways that you can have palindromes and non-palindromic characters. So this is already like giving a lot of cases. So that's why I just restrict it to three. Does that make sense?